Ladies and gentlemen, what are some combinations for getting some extraordinary success in profession like extraordinary job or extraordinary uh, growth in business, extraordinary growth in self-employment, entrepreneurship, politics, uh, the list is very long, right? So today what we are going to discuss is very important because today we will discuss your karmic bank balance, okay? Not your bank, your literal bank balance, but your karmic bank balance. What do I mean by karmic bank balance? How much money do you have in your karmic account? Which means, do you even have success or not? Because many times people think that they are in a particular profession and they are not being successful there. And they want to change some profession and then magically there will be some turnaround and then things will turn in their favor. Which uh, can happen sometimes very rarely. Uh, if a person is doing something which is contrary to his nature but in general in 99% of the times it does not work that way that you just change your thing and you know it's like a cyclone and magically things turn on why because when your karmic bank balance is zero then there is no success and when you have a million dollars in your karmic bank balance in a karmic account then you can get 1 million US dollars in your bank account through any means, through a job or business, you know, singing, dancing, um, data science, uh, risk assessment, finance, crypto, real estate, whatever it is. That is just a detail. That is a secondary analysis. But the primary analysis is to see if you got the dollars <laughs> in your karma or not. Because otherwise, everything else is just a waste of time. Any other discussion is pointless, fruitless. Uh, so, what are some of the indications? Well, there are many indications and I would also love to know from you down in the comments what are some of the indications that you have seen. Now, these indications may be there in your chart, but uh, these are some limited indications. So, if you don't have any of these indications, don't think you won't be successful, okay? No. <clears throat> so, what is the first indication? The first indication is presence of fiery planets like Sun and Mars in the Kendra. Okay, so Sun and Mars in the Kendra houses like 1, 4, 7 and 10. Primarily in the Lagna or in the 10th house. Okay, this can grant extreme level of success because Agni shows fire, passion, aggression in a, in a good sense, not in a bad sense. <coughs> uh, can give a lot of um, narcissism sometimes, unfortunately. But in general, uh, planets... Uh, which are of Agni Tattva nature like Sun and Mars are very supportive of someone's pro of anybody's profession. So therefore, if you have Sun or Mars or both in the first or tenth or either ways, you know, Sun in first, Mars in tenth or either ways, then you can expect that there will be some level of authority that will have. Now, you may be a peon, you may be a collector, you may be a prime minister or anybody, but you will have some level of authority, okay? Then that, that, that is very sure, okay? And especially in the 10th house, these two planets get Dingbali. So, this is a very, very, very strong indicator. Now, the number two, which is the second indicator, the second indicator is the planet Lagna Lord, the Lagnesh, the planet that rules your first house, is related to these three houses the first house 10th house or the 11th house which means in the lagnesh is in the lagna or the 10th or the 11th or the lagnesh is in conjunction with the 10th lord or 11th lord or aspected by the 10th lord or aspected by the 11th lord even then this can happen okay and uh, this is very similar to the third criteria which is in the lagna Case number three, the Lagna is related to the 10th or the 11th, which means the 10th Lord or the 11th Lord is sitting in the Lagna because the 11th house is the house of success and the Lagna is your uh, self, your personality and 10th house is authority, right? So when these three houses combine, then there is exceptional name and fame. So uh, if you have these three combinations, then it can uh, give you a lot of authority in your field. Then what is the fourth combination or placement which can lead to grand success in your profession? The fourth is the placement of Mercury. Mercury is a very, very, very important planet in your chart. Because Mercury is the character from the 10th house. Okay, many people forget this. Mercury is the character for skill. 
So if you have Mars and Mercury together, if you have Sun and Mercury together in a very powerful position, okay, so Sun, Mercury in the 10th house, Sun, Mercury in the Lagna, Sun, Mercury in the 5th, Sun, Mercury in the 11th, or even sometimes Sun, Mercury in the 6th or 3rd also, but primarily uh, the 1st, 5th, 10th or 11th. So if Sun, Mercury or Sun, Mars are conjunct, or even Mercury is exalted in these uh, one of these four houses, um, sitting alone. But there's a condition if Mercury is alone and in own sign or exaltation, then the condition is you should not have an afflicted Mercury. So if Mercury is in Virgo in the fifth house, which means you are Taurus Lagna, and Saturn is aspecting Mercury. Okay, now for Taurus, this becomes a bit critical because. Mark, uh, Saturn here is uh, the Lord of the 9th and 10th and when he aspects, uh, um, uh, although he's a natural malefic, but there will be some other good things because he's a trinal and a kindra Lord. He's a Yokaraka, right? For Taurus and for Libra, of course. But because he's still a natural malefic, uh, this yoga can be reduced to some extent. But because he's the 9th and 10th Lord, there will be some uh, relatively good success after some struggle. But in general, if you are not a Taurus or a Libra, Lagna, <coughs> and if uh, Saturn is uh, aspecting, Saturn or <coughs> Saturn or Rahu, especially if aspects uh, Mercury, then this can be problematic. Now here, you may think, oh, but Mars is also malefic. Why did I say Mars? No, but in this case, Mars, Mercury will give you money, but it will give you a lot of anxiety. Okay, so the malefic aspect of Mars will still work. But for money, it is a very positive combination. And similarly, in your date of birth, if you have, uh, this, this is maybe the next uh, thing, you know, if you have the number 9 and 5 in your date of birth, then also you uh, have the capacity to earn a lot of money. So, for example, if you are born on 5th of September or 9th of May, or you can also take the basic number, like, for example, you are born on um, 5th or 14th or 23rd, no, uh, and then the month is uh, like you know September, or you are born in May um, for nine. So which means either ninth or eighteenth May or twenty seventh May. <clears throat> then also this yoga can work. Or when you add your date of birth, all the numbers you end up with either nine or five, and the other number is present. Okay, so you are born in May, and when you add your da uh, date of birth, it comes to nine. Okay, or you are born in September. And when you add the numbers, uh, all your entire date of birth, it comes to 5. Then also this can work, okay. So, uh, then the next thing uh, which can uh, give you a lot of money is the <coughs> combination of Mars and Rahu, okay. Mars and Rahu, think, 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 why Mars and Rahu? Because Mars Rahu is a very revolutionary person, okay. So, if Mars Rahu are conjunct, in the earth house, in the 2nd, 6th, 10th and 11th, then you can have exceptional money. Because if you see Rahu, co-lords the sign of Aquarius, he's the 11th lord in that sense. Apart from Saturn and Mars in the Lagna lord. So it is like the Lagna lord and the 11th lord are conjunct somewhere. Now Mars-Saturn conjunction can also give money, but it gives money after a lot, lot and a lot of struggle compared to Mars-Rahu. Now, the problem with Mars Rahu is it can give you money through wrong means, okay, through illegal means, through uh, means which are not very good, okay. So, this is something which you need to be careful of <coughs> you know, because you may get into litigation and troubles and problems and corruption and all this with Mars Rahu. So, I won't say it is a good combination to earn money, but it is a good combination to give you money, okay. <laughs> okay. And of course, one of the most important combinations or placements in the chart is a great Jupiter. Why? Because Jupiter is the Karaka for the... How many houses, my God? <laughs> He's the Karaka for the 11th house also, right? He's the Karaka for the 2nd house. He's the Karaka for the 5th house. 7th house for ladies. 9th house. Then 11th house. Did I miss some house? <laughs> Sometimes he's also considered to be the Karaka for the 10th house. <laughs> now, Jupiter alone, if he's placed somewhere, he may not give you money. He may give you good intelligence, you know, um, sharpness, you know, good ability to be a manager. But if Jupiter is aspecting Mercury or the Lagnesh or the Sun or the 10th Lord and they are very well placed, okay, which means 
there is a planet which is very well placed, but Jupiter is throwing his aspect from Jupiter aspects, the 5th, 7th and 9th. So suppose you have an exalted sun in a kendra, okay, and then Jupiter is aspecting it. Oh my God, this is a supremely benefic and auspicious combination because then you have the skill and destiny will also favor you. Whichever houses Jupiter is aspecting, destiny will favor you there depending on the chart, of course. <laughs> And at the end, you have to understand that you need favorable dashas. If you just have some uh, fancy placements, it doesn't guarantee success. You need to have fancy dashas also, okay? Which means you, when you, you start earning like you are 25, then you, are, you work till you are uh, 60. So it's like 35 years of your life. You must have some dasha which is giving you one of these combinations okay so for example if you have an exalted sun but in your kendra but sun dasha never comes okay so then you will only experience that when uh, your uh, the sun antar dasha comes in that mahadasha okay and sun dashas are very small right so antar dashas are also very small so you will not get the results of that planet that is why many people they say oh i have exalted sun in the 10th house why am i not getting rich you know why am i not having because your sun dasha will is not coming or it will come in your 40s in your 50s in your 60s in your 70s in your 80s so therefore <clears throat> please focus on the dashas and if you do not see the dashas you will you will make a very big blunder because without dashas there can be no results period Results come on the basis of dasha. So if you have a great place when but the dasha doesn't come, well, good luck in your next life. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate, but somehow that's your destiny and you have to accept that. Okay. And of course, there are many other combinations, you know, like uh, the third lord, sixth lord, conjunct in the tenth house or, you know, well, all this like... Uh, there are a thousand other things that, that I can write, uh, but this video will go for like uh two hours if i keep speaking on that okay so but these are some of the combinations which i have seen will give you success irrespective of what you are doing in life you are a painter singer dancer it finance politics whatever you are doing it will give you success to a good extent and the more you have these yogas and you combine it with a good dasha or good dashas not just one dasha then you will have great grand success okay Thank you very much for your patience and if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who may need it. And yes, for consultations, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him. Thank you so much.